see or or be have the power of him unless we abide. Most Christians are weak because they're not abiding. They're not doing diligent, stand, <clears throat> obeying what the word of God tells us. So the first commandment that Jesus gives to every Christian leader is to stay with the stuff. The stuff here is him. Stay with him. We get involved with services and powers and work <clears throat> and ministries. And we don't have our, like my man, he had his morning devotion. We don't have devotions. Mm -hmm. And you know when a Christian don't have his devotion, right. you're missing out on the power of God mm -hmm. for that day. Yep. day. You're going on your own strength when you're doing that. And uh, you, we, you spend that time with devotion not to give it to people, but for you to be abiding in Christ. And Christ can energize you and me. So devote, abiding Devotion is one key step. It's the number one step to abide. And how many Christians you and I know don't do have devotions? Get up and get that little daily bread book. That little five minutes, read that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, I'm, I'm all for daily bread. But you need a little bit more than daily mm. bread. You need a little bit of time. Well, you can spend a little time mm -hmm. and talk with Jesus. In fact, mm -hmm. worship. Abiding, we need to worship Jesus. So he tells the first commandment is for us to abide in him. In the meantime, he says, you would abide in me. And when we do abide, the Bible says, we will bear fruit. <clears throat> I have struggled with this verse because sometimes bearing fruit is not visible. As a pastor, I'm thinking, fruit man, I should have a bunch of folk in my church. My church should, my church should be overflowing with people and with ministry. And I struggle with this. I'm still struggling with this. But I'm, I'm, this John 15, I've been on it for how long? It was a long time, huh? Mm -hmm. don't, don't say nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm looking for fruit. Mm -hmm. But the fruit I'm looking for ain't the fruit that God wants. Mm -hmm. The fruit I want is that people can see me doing a great work for the Lord. The fruit God wants is me and him. Isn't that interesting? Amen. God is more focused on me and him than him and the folk in my church. Mm -hmm. That's a hard piece to swallow because I had to stay humble. Mm -hmm. I want to be recognized as Dr. Ray Clark. Over at Baptist Bible, 1,400 people in this church. Amen. Amen. Biggest church in the Cayley, Illinois. 14,000. Yeah. <laughs> I think 1,400. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, sometimes the fruit here, we get messed up. God is looking for a spiritual fruit, which is me and him. You saw the disciples, you look at them, Jesus had 12 disciples in his ministry. Mm -hmm. When he died, he had 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. But look at him now. The fruit is worldwide. <clears throat> but he poured his life into 12 men <clears throat> who bear fruit. At the time when they were bearing fruit, there was no fruit there. So sometimes fruit, God poured his life into those 12 disciples, and he tell them to stay in Jesus. And don't leave the fruit up to him. Let him decide on what kind, what you're going to bear out. That's a hard pill to swallow for a pastor who's seeking and whose life depends upon people. Because people pay your salary. Amen? Amen. And when people start dying out, you start getting a little nervous. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. Church start doing it. You're talking about, okay, where am I coming from? Where's my salary? <laughs> but God has shown me in the 15 years I've been in Decatur and the small church I have that money ain't no problem. I got more money than I ever had. Okay. And I got less people than I ever had. Mm -hmm. Don't tell the brother to cook this. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't hear it. He didn't hear that. But God provides. Mm -hmm. So he's not necessarily concerned about the numbers. But boy, is he concerned about me. Mm -hmm. Me and him. So, abiding. <clears throat> God tells us as leaders, we need to stay in Jesus. We need to do vid diligence. Vigilant in our testimony in our walk, in our devotion. 
in order that we may, he may bear the fruit that he wants us to bear. Commandment number one. Commandment number two is in verse number nine. <clears throat> he says in verse number nine, talking to his disciples again, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. Where is the command at, brothers? Continue in my love. What you say? Continue in my love. That's pretty good. It is a command there. Abide in Christ is the first commandment. The second commandment is to continue in the love of Christ. Not the person, but love for Christ. Oh, we got to be in love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, what do that look like to be in love with Christ? Look at your wife. Are you in love with her? Mm-hmm. You sure? Yes. Are you positive? Yes, sir. Uh-uh, you just saying it. Are you oh, positive? No. Absolutely. Are you sure you love your wife? Absolutely. Uh, my who? Your wife. <laughs> <laughs> my wife? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not married. I thought you were talking about Christ. <laughs> <laughs> You're not married, huh? No, I used to be, but... <laughs> okay. My point is this. <clears throat> All of us are in love, but do we show it? When I, when I was married, my wife would always ask me, do you love me? I said, babe, it's been 44 years. <laughs> you know I love you. I, would, I ain't been around messing with nobody. She said, but do you love me? And what she was asking me was, I'm not showing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not saying it enough. Yeah. I'm not doing enough around her <clears throat> just for her to see that I love her. I'm not thinking about her. No. I don't talk to her. No. I don't call her when I'm at the office all during the day. I call her from time to time and tell her, just to say, what you doing? You know. So Jesus tells us, continue, know what the key word was, to continue, which means to abide. Abide in the love. Don't let the love grow cold. Amen. We can love in our head, you know, I love you, babe, and then going on out, I don't even think about babe until, until we come back home at night. But to abide in Christ is all the time we have to focus on what can I do for Jesus today, right now. Why do I do it? Because I love him. So he tells us, he, to abide, he tells disciples to continue in his love. Now, how do you continue in the love of God? He tells us by staying put in the word. Oh, I can't tell us enough to read the Bible. Read, 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 read. We'll read a biography before we pick up a Bible. Watch out, man. We'll read a story about a Christian or a Christian group before we read the Bible. It's the Word of God that increases the love of God. The more you read the Bible, just, you ain't got to study, just read it. The more in love you will come with God. You got to read the Bible. More than two minutes. Every day. Devotions is clear. Bible reading is a must for us to abide. In fact, verse number nine, verse, look at verse 10, church. I mean, folks, I'm sorry. That's all right, church. Look at verse 10. If you do what? Keep my commandments. You shall do what? Abide in my love. God's word and God's love are inseparably connected. Amen. You and I can't do the commandment if we don't know them. Bridget. You can't. Huh? You can't love God unless you don't know him. It's connected. So these two commandments are really connected into one. In that verse that says, love the God with all that heart and all that soul and all that mind with all that strength. Mm -hmm. And he said on that, it's based on all the commandments. Here it is. Two commandments of Jesus. Love the Lord. Abide in him. Stay put in that great love. Enjoy the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't enjoy being Christian sometimes. Sometimes, like the Decatur now, the, the Decatur farm down there, and they got all them little song groups. Temptation comes on, and you wish you was back in those days. 
Mm-hmm. Y'all don't know nothing about temptation, y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but you don't never think about the days when you were saved. <clears throat> uh, how you used to be on fire for Jesus. Do you? You ever think about that? You ever dream about those days when you was on fire for Jesus? And, mm-hmm. and now they're all grown cold. It's just like a memory. Some have been saved too long, and the fire is gone. I Most wish. marriages are that way too. They've been married a long time, and mm-hmm. the wife don't look the same. She got all <clears> the little <throat> bumps in the in the areas she didn't have when you were first married. Her. You yeah. got a few bumps in where you had when you didn't <laughs> when first married as well. Yeah, man. But uh, it means to keep <clears throat> the fire going. Jesus, the previous verse it was to abide in Him, and now in this verse it tells us to abide in His love. Stay in love with Jesus. To maintain a passionate relationship with the person. We love Jesus' stuff. We love the blessings. But do we love him? It's hard to love somebody you've never seen. It's hard to love people that we see. <laughs> Amen? Even harder. Even harder, isn't that right, brother? <laughs> but it's almost impossible. I have never seen Jesus. And yet God tells me to love him more than to love my wife who I saw and spent 43 years, 44 years with before she passed. Mm-hmm. How can you love someone that you've never seen? Mm-hmm. Well, you'll see him through this. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's why Jesus tells us to get in the word. <clears throat> he don't tell us to get in the word to know stuff. He tells us to get in the word so we can see Jesus. We can see God. And if you're not in the Bible, folks, you don't know what Jesus is like or who God is like. Mm-hmm. Isn't that right? So he tells us to abide in the person himself, our Savior, and then abide in him, his love for us. How much do he love us? He died for us. Mm-hmm. He gave his all for us. He came down here as a man. God took on flesh and became a man. That's love. I don't love me that much. And I say don't love y'all that much. <laughs> and y'all don't love me that much where you won't take my sin upon yourself. Mm-hmm. You don't love me enough to give me a couple, couple of dollars, amen? <laughs> well, I ain't gonna talk about y'all. Y'all do. But I'm talking about this guy. He won't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> now the last one is the key and most pivotal commandment. This is the one that takes work. The first two really is not that much work to be done. But the last one takes great effort. Mm -hmm. And that's where we fail most of the time. We do good on our devotion. We do good on loving Jesus. Boy, when it comes to loving my brother right Jim. I mean, I don't even like him. (laughs) 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 Well, the last commercial, the last command in verse 12. Look at it. Love one another. What did you say it said? What does it say? It says what? This, he, he, he repeats this now. He wants us to get this. This is what, church? My commandment. Now notice that word commandment is singular. Of all the commandments that Jesus gives us, he repeats this one as the most important one. This is my commandment. This is the last commandment I'm going to leave with you guys. Not the ten. Not the first two I just mentioned. This is my command. This is the one. In fact, it's based on verse thirty-four. Go back in chapter uh, thirteen. Look up at look up at thirteen, right quick. Thirteen, chapter thirteen, and verse thirty-four. Let's take a look at it. Thirteen, this, fourteen. Yeah, thirteen, fourteen. Thirteen, thirty-four. I'm sorry. 13, yeah. This. No, I mean a new. You see it there, do you? Mm-hmm. Which is, beside the ten, beside all the other commandments in the Bible, Jesus said, this is a new one for the church. Mm -hmm. For you guys. For you leaders. And he said, this is a new commandment I, Jesus, give unto us. And what is it, church? That you love one another. 
Så er det her nede i byen. Det er ikke langt søde, det er der. Nå, det er langt. Det er just a command. Verse 34. That you love one another. It is that I have, as I have loved you. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, that song, it's a song about that. About a, a new commandment. Go ahead. I'm going to spend a few minutes to try to show you what it means to love the brother beside you and me, in front of you. Because we don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. It's easy to say I love you. Mm-hmm. And it's easy to look at my brother. My, I don't even know Brian that well. I love you, Brian. Is it Brian? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking like I got him wrong, man. <laughs> I don't even know the guy. So it's so easy to say I love you because I do know I don't hate him. Is that right? <laughs> and so when we say we love people, we're just using that criteria, I don't hate, so I do must love you. But let me tell you what it means to love somebody <laughs> and what Jesus tells us. So he tells us, now, I'm going to read the verses. I don't want you to look up because it's going to take too much time. How you asked us, Jesus tells us to love the disciples. And how, what, how do we love each other? How do you love white folk? How do you love black folk? We don't have no white folk. We don't even have whatever you know. How we love people that we know? How we love people we can't stand? Some people got some nasty ways. Mm-hmm. Some people, they don't know it nasty, well, but well, but to well, us well, they got some bad. Some people are hard to get along mm-hmm. with. Amen. They just Amen. they just they just come across. It, it, it just bothers you to see them. They, man, how you love them? Well, here's the number one. Romans twelve ten tells you. You can write the verse down. I'm gonna read it. First of all, before you go there, look at verse twelve. The first example of how to love is in verse 12. Back in 15. Back in 15, 12. 15, 12. The very first example of how to love a brother and sister is in verse 12. We cannot miss this. You miss this, all the rest of the verse I'm going to give you won't matter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How I do it? How, you answer that question for me, church. How do we love one another? As he has loved us. Just like he has loved us. That's what the verse says. That's what it says. That's what it says, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That's a tall order. Mm-hmm. That's Jesus. a tall order. Yeah, I'm not Jesus. Yeah. I'm not either. But I'm supposed to be like you are. Like Jesus loved you. Do Jesus love you, brother? Yes. Do he? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Are you positive? Mm-hmm. I'm 100% positive. Don't ask me again. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce can only get away with that, okay? <laughs> now, do I love you? Yeah, you love me. You know me because you know me. But you see, Jesus, we know he loved us because he paid the price. Yes. But <clears throat> I, don't, you, I have not paid any price for you. I ain't died for you. I don't think I will either. <laughs> So how am I to love you like Jesus did? Some verses going to show us the ways that Jesus loved us. And then we going in turn try to love those. Romans 12. Love unconditionally. Let me preach it, brother. Oh. <laughs> well, That's sorry. exactly right. Golden, 1210. Golden rule. Be kindly <clears throat> affectionate to one, yep. to one another. Mm-hmm. Yes. The very first thing about showing love is be affectionate. Mm-hmm. You know what affectionate means? Yeah. Now, that, that, that's, this feels this feel funny right here. <laughs> this feels funny, especially in the day of homosexuality and all this touching and all that. This feels funny right here. But you know, when you when you love someone, you're affectionate. You don't, you're not afraid to touch. You're right? Mm-hmm. Now, the Bible says, I kindly touch. Now, not that, not that pastor stuff, okay? I kindly touch. Be kindly affectionate toward Christian brothers. We're brotherly love. I have brothers, black brothers and sisters. I'm to love Bryant just like I love them. You know he a different color. 
That's a tall order, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Isn't that a tall order? So, let me give you another verse. Oh, before you go there, the Bible tells you, prefer one another. Let Brian go first. <laughs> now, that's a rough one right there, brother. Let, let let you go first before me. In the food line? In the food line? <laughs> in traffic? Mm. And, and all that. Stuff. How many times you and I speed up and don't let him in? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 you go down town on vacation. <laughs> but in this verse, the Bible talking about Christians. We need to be kindly affected one to another. We need to show it with, like, like we do a brother or sister at home. And we need to honor one another. Put them before I said that's just in, that's three things in one verse. The Bible tells us to to love one another. Ephesians five two gives us another one. Ephesians five two just says, "Walk in this love." Don't just say it, brother. Show it. Show it. Walk means it's an everyday experience. I don't love a white guy one day, then hate him the next day. I don't love a black guy one day, then hate him the next day. I'm to, I'm to be consistent in that feeling, in that love, one to consistent and kindly affected, consistent in putting him first before me, consistent in that love. Walk, he tells us, Ephesians, Ephesians five two says to walk in the love, as Christ has loved us, every day. I got to remember how Christ loved me, and I should show that love towards somebody else every day. Amen. Let me give you another one. Amen. Quickly, 1 Thessalonians 3.12. 1 3.12 says, let me read it for you, then I'll come back. It says, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men. Even as I, even as we do towards you, God tells us to increase the love, to let it overflow, let it be seen. I love you. I need to love you more. Increasing that love. First Peter one twenty two tells us this. This is a this is a tough one uh, for me. Seeing that you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love. You anybody know what unfeigned love is? Not fake. What you say, Bruce? Not fake. Not fake love. Boy, we show fake love all the time. Mm. It is imper- imperative for us. To show real love for a brother and sister. Unfaint. Don't be faking it. Don't give me a dollar just to get rid of me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Give me a dollar because you really mean it. And don't want me to pay it back. Amen. <laughs> Most people give you stuff, but they're looking for stuff back in return. That's not unfeigned love. Unfeigned love for the brethren. And then he said, with a pure heart, fervently. Be on fire. First Peter 2 says, First Peter 1 Peter 1.20, I'm just repeating it again. Seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love, of the brother, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Fervently means continually with fervency, with diligence, uh, to show diligently, like, like to be meaningful, on purpose with it. First Peter 3 8. Be of one mind, mm-hmm. having compassion. One for another. Have compassion for a brother and sister. Be pitiful. You know what? Pe- people don't like the word pity. Don't be pitying me. Pity is a good thing. God wants to show mercy for folks. Be sorry for folks when people are going through things. 
as Christians, we need to love Christians. When people, when Christians go through hard times, don't be talking about what sin they done did. It caused it happen. Be sorrowful that it's happened and, 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 and be, be compassionate for them. Sometimes we're glad to see Christians get whipped. <laughs> Amen. 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 Maybe they deserve it. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm talking. I'm talking from a pastor. Sometimes, sometimes pastors will be talking to folk, and folks are hard headed, and they get pastor get to do a slight little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, that ain't supposed to be that way. I'm supposed to cry when they cry. And I'm supposed to laugh when they laugh. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to hurt when they hurt. Amen. Even Amen. though they deserve to be hurt. Mm. So he tells us. To reject pity as a form of pride, is it not? That would be true. <coughs> of course, that would be true. And then the last point he tells in the verse uh, uh, three, uh, first Peter three, is to be courteous. Mm-hmm. Just be courteous. Speak to folk. You know they don't speak to you. Love folk. You know they don't love you back. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. You know they talk about you. You be courteous and kind. Let me give you the last, another one. 1 Peter 4, 8, above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity or love covers what? A mother to the same. A mother to the same. The reason why we can't get over Christians is because we don't love them. If you really love me, I cannot sin too bad where you cannot overcome. Christians go to, to the grave hating. Because mm-hmm. they can't get over past what somebody did them. The Bible tells us to love. Love covers a murder to the ten. Now here's the one I want you to turn to. This is the last passage. I want us all to turn to this one. We're going to look at this one together. This is the last passage right here. That I'm having to look at. So let me turn over. You might get done today, Pastor. Oh, I will get done today. I, I, I cut out short, man. Because I see you sleeping over here already on me. You <laughs> <laughs> think you're at church already. Right? <laughs> practicing for tomorrow. <laughs> practicing for tomorrow. <laughs> First John chapter 3. Let's take a look at that one, church. Mm-hmm. The love chapter. The love chapter. This sums up all those passages that I gave you. What verse? Uh, 16. Where's John 3:16? Hereby, Jesus said, this is evidence. The word hereby means, this is proof. Hereby, we perceive the love of God. In other words, hereby, here's proof that everybody's going to see that you love me and I love you. Hereby, with all the stuff he said in Scripture, hereby, proceed we the love of God. Here's how people know that you love God. He says, because you laid down, he laid down his life for us, we ought to, ooh, mm-hmm. we ought to, mm, 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 can't mm, say it. I can't really say it. <laughs> we ought, I'm glad he didn't command us to, mm-hmm. but he used the word ought. <laughs> Metaphor. I'm glad that's there. We ought to want to lay down our lives for each other. Now, that's real love. I mean, you'll take a bullet for me, and I'll take a bullet for you, and I don't know you that well. Now, that's the attitude we ought to have, because Jesus Christ gave his life for us. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So in verse 16, verse 17 tells us, we ought to lay down our life for the brethren, for Christian as a whole, black and white, green or gray, no matter who they are, fat and skinny, whatever they are, rich or poor. But whosoever have this world's good and sees his brother have need, and he do what? Okay. Shut up his bowels of mercy. Shut up his bowels. Mm-hmm. Which means is, you look around here, you see old Pastor Clark ain't had no breakfast. Mm-hmm. The pizza is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Most of my black man will go in. <laughs> <laughs> we got bananas. 
You ought to reach in your pocket, pull out a 20. I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm, no. My point was, when you see a person with need, many of us turn our back. Mm. <laughs> he says, look at verse again. But whosoever loves this, have this world good, I mean, you got the stuff to do it with, and you see your brother have need of the stuff that you got, mm. and you refuse. That word shut it up means you refuse. Yeah. God done told you to share. <clears throat> God gave it to you to share. Mm -hmm. And you refuse. That's what the word shut it up means. You refuse up your compassion, the bowels of compassion from him. How can you say you love God? Mm -hmm. Now we have struggled with our stuff. <clears throat> We Christians, we love you by words. But when it comes to giving you some stuff, mm -hmm. that I have extra now, not the stuff you need, but extra stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know you have need of it. And I refuse. Shut up my body. Turn my head. Close my eyes. Deny you in my mind. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that's not showing love for the brother. Nor do I love God like I think I do. Look at the last passage. My little children, my saints, my brothers and sisters, my men around the table, my pastor, myself included, let us love in words. In words. No. Let me say, my love. No, you see my, that? My let us love, love in words. Did y'all have that in y'all Bible? Uh-oh. Y'all have let us oh. love you in the words in the Bible? It says <laughs> no. <laughs> it says love not. That's right, brother. Then he said, said not. Neither in tongue. We said we love you in word. I love you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Neither in tongue. But the Bible says in verse 18, let us not love in word, neither with the tongue, but in deed and in truth. Mm -hmm. God tells us to show, show it. My word to us this morning, three commandments. Abide in Jesus. Abide in his word. Love the Christians. Love them. By this, all men will know that we are men of God. Mm -hmm. By loving one another. Mm -hmm. Of all the things that show that we are Christian is when a Christian can love another Christian mm. like Amen. nobody else does. And all those passages shows us how nobody else will love you but Jesus does. Amen. Three commandments. Tough, ain't they? That's why when you worry about no ten, just gotta worry about those three. <laughs> abide in the person, abide in the love, and then share that love with the brothers and the sisters. Amen. That's my word for us today, folks. Amen. Let's practice it, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, Thank you for the opportunity. Good work, brother. Amen. You know, uh, we had a glimpse of that years ago, you know, when the promise keepers, when they was growing. Yeah. And, yeah. Was, and you would see them on TV yeah. with their sons and uh, 